For this podcast, we're going to be focusing on some uh, videos from the Atlas Society. It's basically dedicated to the uh, teachings of Ayn Rand, who grew up in uh, Soviet, uh, the Soviet Union under uh, communism. So for if there's anyone that understands the actual evils of the system of Marxism and the actual horrors it causes... Uh, she would. She was actually one that actually knew it, and actually knew, th and actually knew all of the benefits when she came to the United States as an actual immigrant, uh, and actually all the horrors that she actually witnessed uh, growing up, and when she came to the United States, she just felt something completely different, and she explained all of the benefits of this, and uh, she was. She became both an author and a philosopher. And this is a society based on her teachings. And these are a couple of uh, Draw My Life's from her uh, teachings. And I'm going to pick uh, four specifically. Uh, one of which is actually going to be dealing with uh, Black History Month as well. And uh, I might still do the uh, uh, nightly live stream, but uh, it just depends on how time constraints are and everything but uh here they come and i'll give some uh points on each one with it because for those uh people on the left it might be a little bit shocking to kind of see these things and uh uh kind of deal with uh what they're actually stating uh and uh deal with what they're what the actual uh points are and they won't necessarily be able to actually understand what the actual ideas are behind them because they've essentially been taught the exact opposite. Here's the first one. Socialism and social justice are greedy. My name is Greed, and I am going to draw my life. I put off the greatest scam in history, and I'm here to gloat. My parents were sloth and entitlement. They fought all the time. My dad always did the minimum, and my mom always expected more. But they were both grifters, who instilled in me a deep desire for the unearned. I wanted what other people had. I just didn't want to work for it. As I grew up, this became harder and harder to pull off. People said I was a lazy son of a bitch. Exactly what you'd expect parents like sloth and entitlement. But then I met some friends who gave me an idea. Envy and victimhood. Envy said I needed a scapegoat. An easy mark. We found her. Her name was Money. Or rather, anyone who was successful or who made money. Lots of money. Businessmen. Bullseye. Then victimhood had a revelation that changed everything. She said, if you want to be greedy, you've got to use the needy. I started to try it out, and it worked. I started small, a hand out here, a hand out there. But then I asked, where's the real power, the really big money? Government. So, with the help of politicians, we started to scale the operation big time. We co-opted whole industries, corrupted entire generations to our way of thinking. No need to earn. All you need is need. Need education? You're entitled. Need a job? You're entitled. Need money? You're entitled. No need to earn it. We'll take it from the rich, the productive, and we'll call them the greedy ones. <laughs> it's a great gag. A great gig. I fooled everyone, except for one person. Her name was Ayn Rand. In books like Atlas Shrug and The Fountainhead, she blew my cover. She took my bad guys, businessmen, and made them into heroes. Achievers who produce and trade value for value, win-win. She called out the crony capitalists, the pole peddlers. She said it was greedy to expect someone else to provide your housing, your health care. Greedy to expect someone else to provide for your needs. Of course, she was right. But fortunately, our little secret is safe. Kids today don't read Rand. They read about social justice and income inequality. They worship need. Attack the rich. Demonize that. 
Blame those who make it. Elevate those who take it. And remember, if you truly want to be greedy, you've got to use the needy. As you see with the first video, it basically shows that uh, with so socialism and social justice, it's not actually about... Uh, with the social justice, we're not actually talking about actually solving any problems. We're just talking about looting uh, the productive uh, members of society and essentially stealing. And that's the whole point of what uh, what the cartoon shows. And that's the uh, and essentially because we have people glorifying Marx in schools and uh, essentially uh, trying to hide the teachings of Ayn Rand. You'll never see Ayn Rand uh, taught in schools. You'll always see the ideas of Marx glorified and the other economic t and economic teachings of like uh, Keynes glorified. And uh, when it comes down to that is you'll see that uh, the ideas of central power is going to be glorified and the idea of individualism is going to be shunned upon. And that's where it comes down to. And uh, when we see that is this is what needs to be understood with, uh, with, with this. Social justice is not, uh, uh, as they talk about, is not a... Uh, is is not a uh, valiant uh, uh, goal in uh, society because of the way they're doing it. They're not actually looking for solutions. They're just looking for free money, and this is basically an excuse. You look at either recent case of Kaepernick. Kaepernick wasn't looking for actually change, or any of these other people were doubting a knee looking for change. They're looking for free money. And that uh, when it comes on to these uh, Black Lives Matter people, that's why none of the people in Black Lives Matter were actually putting up real solutions for such things as uh, as basically criminal justice reform. When uh, the people, the libertarian conservatives, were doing criminal justice reform, they didn't want anything to do with them. They were saying, "What we want is we want free housing. We want." Uh, we want $15 an hour guaranteed wages. We want uh, free this, that, and the other. That was what was being proposed by these people in Black Lives Matter. That's why when it comes down to social justice, these social justice warriors, they're not for actually uh, correcting problems. They're actually out for free stuff. Now, when we go to uh, next, we're going to go with, with evil is envy to continue on this point. My name is Envy. I've built an empire beyond my wildest dreams, and I'm here to thank you. I was born in the shadow of man's soul, the runt of the litter I was. Compared to the virtues, what did I have to offer man? Turns out, I have plenty to offer. Excuses, justifications, demonization, and so much more. It's not you, it's them. It's not your fault. Who does she think she is? Why do they have so much more? The more humans excel, the more opportunities I've found. Religions tried to ban me, said I was a vice. But now, even the Pope praises socialism. The virtues, the so-called good guys, they work as a team. So I put together my own team. I found a partner. Her name was Victimhood. And she was beautiful. No one likes envy. But everyone loves a victim. Victimhood has real power. She lent people a sense of justice, a feeling of moral superiority. The great thing is, almost anyone can be a victim. Feeling marginalized? Victim. Underappreciated? 
victim, underpaid, victim. We started to spread our virus, academia, journalism, politics. That's where we groomed our best student to become our biggest star. Karl Marx. Oh, my protege. He created an entire philosophy of envy. Class warfare took us to new heights. A whole generation of leaders converted whole cultures, whole nations to my cause. Incredible. A platform for mass slaughter, all in the name of the greater good, caring for others. I remember this one moment during the Bolshevik Revolution. My guys broke into a pharmacy, told the owner they were liberating the business in the name of the people. I'll never forget the look in the eyes of his little girl. She saw straight through me. She grew up and she fought back. She called herself Ayn Rand and wrote anti-envy books like The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged. She was my enemy. She wrote about the strong, the proud, the independent achievers. But today, I'm winning. The kids read Karl Marx, not Ayn Rand. They're taught to idolize murderers like Che Guevara, Castro, and Mao. They learn about social justice, an idea I invented. Tax the rich, demonize the 1%, make them pay their fair share, offer guaranteed income, college tuition, all that free stuff. Music to my ears. So, thank you to all the self-righteous protesters, the self-appointed victims, the social justice warriors, the hypocrites who rail against capitalism while enjoying all its benefits. Thank you for all the power you've given up, the power you've given me. And that just kind of reiterates the point that I say in the first one that basically is what they've done is essentially is uh, essentially replaced uh, uh, the teachings of Rand uh, with the teachings of Marx, which essentially Marx wasn't interested in actually uh, these I these positive ideas. He's essentially just ideas of just bloodshed and uh, murder and just envy. So basically, people can grab power on the top, and it wasn't anything new. And that was the whole point uh, of the whole system, and that that's what needed to be understood and uh from these from all these people and there are all these people that are learning this is there's nothing righteous about uh about uh envy or any of this stuff there's nothing righteous about any of this uh marxism it's actually just uh, flat out evil and vindictive and murderous and that's the whole point and uh you're not, a, and you you don't get the benefits of cap of a cap pure capitalist society. You only you start out with uh, crony capitalism, which is what a lot of them have led to the current system, and you eventually lead off to even worse systems to basically until you get to the uh, until you get to where you're basically having these morons wear these uh, shirts praising murderers like Che Guevara who would basically murder women and children first and just slash their necks and shoot them in the face. And he he would basically glorify that. Even It even got to a point with Guevara that even Castro basically had Guevara executed. That uh, Guevara was so murderous that basically is Castro wouldn't even tolerate him. And the, this is, uh, Guevara was the one that's, uh, that is actually glorified by kids in colleges. And he has been f by these uh, left-wing uh, radicals. I mean, there's a reason why he was killed. He was, he was even too uh, radical for uh, the uh, Castro brothers. And th this should show you how far he is. I mean, he's basically, he's a 
he's basically a bloodthirsty uh, serial killer, nothing more. And here we go with the next one, money is the root of all good. Now you have to understand, now this will explain that money is nothing but a medium, nothing more. And it doesn't know racism, it can't because it's nothing but a medium. My name is Money. Almost everyone wants me, but no one understands me. I am a noble woman of humble beginnings. My parents, toil and trade, earned their living by the sweat of their brow. As a child, I had a special talent. I could help people exchange value for value. Where once people could only barter, now they could buy. You can take me anywhere. You can store me, save me. I grew up, and the town grew with me, and word of my special powers soon spread. People came from all over. Most came in goodwill. They brought ideas, energy, life. We lived in peace and growing prosperity. But in our midst and outside our gates lurked evil. His name was envy. He brought no value, nothing to trade, only need and greed. They brought looters who came and destroyed our village. They denounced me as evil and locked me away. These destroyers knew how to take me, but they knew not how to make me. Then, explorers found a new home for me. Its name was America. I started over. Started small, but in freedom and enlightenment, I flourished. Value for value. I traded among farmers, inventors, industrialists. I grew more powerful, prosperous, and popular than ever. I traded across cities, across states, across countries, continents. I even traded across time between those who borrowed and those who loaned. Those who worked hard for me and respected me, I gave them my rewards. Those who neglected me or were ashamed of me, I soon deserted them. And then, my old enemies showed up. Instead of blunt weapons, they found more covert ways to take me. They took me in taxes and clothed their message of envy and greed in the name of the public good. They took away my gold and gave me a counterfeit pile of paper. They set up a big bureaucracy and called it the Federal Reserve. What an irony. It didn't reserve me or deserve me. It degraded me and inflated me, printing me on worthless pieces of paper whose value they set. But like the destroyers before them, they failed to understand value isn't in the token. It's in the value exchanged. There was one person who understood. Her name was Ayn Rand. She fought back against those who claimed I was the root of all evil and defended my true nature as the root of all good. Not as a god to be worshipped or as a devil to be despised, but as a tool to be respected, a value to be earned, and a tribute to the best in men. As you see with what call with with money, it's, it's nothing more than an actual medium, and it can't be uh, essentially uh, viewed as being evil or any of these things uh, as uh, people try to make it out to be. Because the fact is, it's nothing more than a medium of of trade, because it's it was merely meant to replace the bartering system. And those who have actually claimed it as such have, are actually quite ignorant to the way the actual system works and their actual uh, and the actual problems are actually coming from the actual people who have actually been envious and tried to essentially steal the actual wealth from actually 
cronyism through the establishment of fiat currencies and trying uh, from the top and from these people that, uh, as we explained before, from these basically trying to create all of this uh, theft through uh, non-production by saying, I want a piece of the pie that I haven't earned through subsidies, through uh, basically asking for free stuff and calling it social justice and victimhood. Now we're going to look at the last one, which is uh, which is really dedicated to uh, Black History Month. And this is called "Socialism uh, is Slavery uh, to uh, uh, is Slavery of All to All." My name is Frederick Douglass. I was born a slave in February of 1818 in Easton, Maryland. My mother, I knew barely. My father, I knew not. Deprived of family, of history, and of freedom, I was raised not as a person, but as property. As a domestic animal, like all bond animals, I existed not as an end in myself, but only to serve those who claim to own me. But I had a mind, a will of my own, and a deep hunger to learn, to live free. With purpose and cunning, I taught myself to read and learn there were others out there who thought like me. When I stood up for myself, I was punished. My master sent me to be whipped and broken. But one day I fought back. I learned that standing up for myself and for what was right can be all that is needed to cow a bully. This single act of defiance gave me hope and fueled my desire to be free. In 1838, I escaped by train, by boat, by foot. The Underground Railroad bore me towards freedom. I worked any job I could get, and for the first time, I could keep the fruit of my own labor. Just as I stood up for myself, I began speaking out for others. Not just the slaves denied the right to own their lives, but also for women denied the right to vote. I spoke, I wrote, I agitated. And when my abolitionist allies embraced Marxism, I condemned it as ignorant nonsense and as an insult to those in bondage, the slaving of all to all. I came to see the Constitution of the United States as a powerful weapon in the fight against slavery. My philosophy was that of self-made men. I advocated pride, not in groups of race, but in individual achievement, liberty, responsibility, and work. That was my holy trinity. Thus was my creed. Thus inspired my deeds. My sacred life and my legacy. What will be yours? Mind you that uh, that uh, you had uh, Marxism lift uh, that existed back in his time. And it, and it was even offered as a solution for uh, abolition, and he still rejected it because he knew that it was just going to ex exist back into the same exact thing, and he rejected it. And this is something that Frederick Douglass knew, that basically it was going to be the same thing that he uh, was exactly in. He was not going to basically say, Hey, I'll take. Uh, I'll go from uh, where I escaped from, one uh, individual slave o slave ownership situation to complete and utter government slave ownership. And he knew that, 
and this is the thing that needs to be understood is that slavery is basically uh is government's uh is government driven uh is uh socialism is basically government driven slavery and that's all it is <clears throat> that's why when we look at uh countries that have socialism we do not see countries that have even the cases where countries that have crony capitalism we're not seeing people move from crony capitalist countries to uh socialist countries not by any uh standing at all and this is a key factor that needs to be understood is that people don't uh move there for a reason because if people did they would actually uh if people did they would uh be leaving very very quickly if they actually had the option to no people are actually going in the opposite direction people are actually leaving uh, if they have, if they actually have the first opportunity to, they're leaving these communist and socialist countries as soon as they can, and it doesn't, uh, and that doesn't include these countries that are being artificially labeled as communist or socialist by people like Bernie Sanders, where he says, "Oh, this De oh Denmark's a social, a communist or a socialist country." That doesn't include with because Denmark has actually stated that they're a market economy to begin with. This is a major. Uh, this is a uh, major point to make. Is they are not. No, we have to go to actually the uh, one that uh, Bernie Sanders praised before Denmark, which is Venezuela. We don't see Ven We don't see many Venezuelans living too high in the hog right now, do we? They're actually. They're, it's a broken country, and it's a broken country because socialism doesn't work. And we'll have people like uh, John Oliver state that, oh, it's because of uh, bureaucratic uh, mistakes. No, it's because socialism doesn't work. Socialism is designed not to work. It's designed basically so that people at the top can get more power. It's not designed to help anyone. If you look at the way socialism works, it's designed actually for central, centrally controlled people to actually live very, very nicely and everybody else to live in poverty. You're only sharing poverty and you, you actually get your rights, or, or I should say more effectively, your privileges granted from the actual government. You don't have any rights. Now in an actual capitalist society, you do have rights. Now what needs to happen with it is you get to crony capitalism, then they start to trample on your rights, and that's where the actual problem happens. Now crony capitalism happens when you have socialism starting to creep in on capitalism. That's where you have issues. Now we've had this over the last hundred or so years. Since uh, since around the uh, turn of the century, since basically uh, Teddy Roosevelt came in, we've had actually a certain level of crony capitalism, and that's the whole problem. We can we can call it fascism, whatever you want to call it, and that's the whole issue. And once you start to actually dismantle these things of people like from Teddy Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, um other people like uh that have actually done a lot of damage like uh Lyndon Baines Johnson uh we have uh I mean you could pretty much uh name a bunch of other people like that I mean and there's been huge problems with that there's uh Nixon's another one that's done a lot of damage there is um on top of that and you you could pretty much I mean there's a huge list of issues when it comes down to what we've seen done but if you actually take out these people that what they did um such as like jimmy carter barack obama george w bush george herbert walker bush bill clinton and you start to t remove these guys out and their impact of what they've done and you'll actually see that uh will have a lot more liberty. What needs to actually happen is we need to get down the foreign policy to actually only focus on the United States. We don't need anything uh, to focus. There is no such thing as common defense. I'm sorry to people with it. You need to actually focus on individuals. There is no uh, collectivism needs to be destroyed. The idea uh, to, totally needs to be gone as we see with this whole thing. And once we realize this, you're going to see that it's going to be beneficial for everyone. 
and that's the whole point is that uh, that's the idea needs to be made is that people when you start working out for your own interest your, your own interest could be could be varying with it, it your own interest could actually be uh, to aid other people that could actually be your own self-interest but the fact is is it needs to basically be out of your own self-interest and not through uh, basically being compelled from uh, the government there should be no uh, force being done and when it comes down to it and that's why we have uh, certain values that are actually instilled in people that are positive the idea of saying I want uh, I want I want I want without actually earning it that's not a positive value those are negative values you need to earn what you get and that that's the whole point and that, that that's that's what uh, her teachings were showing that basically we had this and when we have these social justice warriors and all this other garbage that ruins the idea of what we have and that's what these morons were teaching these morons were are essentially just trying to drag us down to uh, essentially uh, these systems that we had they were basically your serfdom systems uh, they were uh, they were always seen before where you had some type of declared royalty and then everyone else was meant to serve royalty and that's no different than what Marxism is Marxism does, doesn't necessarily declare royalty by family it just declares royalty by a falsified election and that's the only difference, but people are still living in the same squalor as they do in those systems. And it's just nothing but uh, a modern day version thereof. And it wasn't any different than those other systems, it was just basically doctored up to make it look like it was different. And it wasn't, any, it wasn't anything new, and that's what needs to be understood. And when we have the the only the only new ideas that we had was actually the ideas of individualism. When we when we break away from that, when we break collectivism was something that we have uh, that was actually had been around for a long time with the with these ideas. Now individualism is actually our newest idea, and that was the idea of liberty. And this was something that actually was completely different from uh, anything else. And it's individualism is something that's separate from this idea and what Marx was doing was essentially just rehashing what everyone else uh, was doing and when people say oh it's a fresh idea oh though socialism is newer no it's not it's, it's actually very very old all it is is basically is stealing from the past and basically just kind of uh, kind of doctoring it up a little bit and claiming it as your own work that's really not no different than anything else he just uses essentially envy and greed to assert his position. Now, if uh, now if you like this uh, video, like, subscribe, click the uh, notification bell, share it all the way around, and I will see you guys probably, hopefully later for uh, live stream. If not, then I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everyone.